We are live now. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening to the evening, the evening webinars of Delhi Orthopedic Association. Uh, we've been doing this for now six months, and it's a very nice uh, time to get connected. Today, we are having a masterclass on total hip uh, arthroplasty implants, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy uh, the evening because the speakers are real uh, big guys who will carry wisdom on the shoulder and share all the knowledge with you. So the pattern is that uh, we have uh, lectures and uh, we have interactions on those lectures. So for all the delegates, you have a chat box with you where you can put in your uh, queries. Uh, all those queries will be taken up uh, uh, during the meeting and uh, you will be answered. And uh, don't hesitate on putting any questions because uh, all the speakers invite as many questions as coming in. So uh, today's uh, moderator is Dr. Harvin Tandon. He's a senior consultant and adult joint reconstruction uh, surgeon from Indrapas Alpolo Hospital, Delhi. He's also the executive committee member of Delhi Orthopedic Association. He would be moderating today's session and uh, would be introducing the faculty and taking the session further. So I hand it over to Dr. Harvin. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks, Lalit. So I invite all the... I'm sorry. Just give one click. It will come. Okay. You can see the screen. Yes, we can, but uh, try to get it uh, full screen. I'll just stop it once and go back again. Yeah, share again, yeah. Go to the top of the screen to unshare. So I'm pressing stop share. It's not happening. Let, let me help you. Yes. Yeah. It's gone, yeah. sir. So you share again, uh, Havin? Yeah. Ashok, can you guide me, please? It's so I'm so sorry it's not playing. We had okay. Can you just uh, exit me again for a moment, please? Sure, sir. I'm so sorry, it's actually, it has stopped working. It's not shutting down. So is it possible for you to share it with me so that I can play it for some time? Well, do we take up the next talk, uh, yes. next Dr. Week. Pradeep Sharma's talk, and uh, then come back to Havin? Yes, we can do that. Havin can, uh, of course, uh, introduce the speaker, and then uh, Dr. Pradeep can start. Havin <coughs> is frozen, I think. So yes, some, some internet connection issue from his end, I guess. I think uh, we'll take up uh, Dr. Pradeep Sharma's talk. Uh, Dr. Pradeep, if you can uh, share your screen. 
Dr. Pradeep Sharma is one of the senior Sir, most uh, arthroplasty surgeons around and all of us uh, have been looking uh, at him and learning from him. He is a senior consultant, uh, I suppose, at Indian Spinal Injury Center right now and uh, heads the department there and has uh, loads of experience on arthroplasty and has visited uh, uh, the globe, around the globe. And uh, I'm sure we're going to learn a lot from his presentation. Please. Hello. Yes. Uh, my brief today is uh, acetabular side challenges and cup positioning. Actually, so what are the challenges when we are actually doing um, these replacements in uh, complex hips? Are the spinal pathologies and their pelvic tilts because they alter the version and make the placement of the cup very difficult. Likewise, the other challenges one would face is hip dysplasias, revision surgeries, where there is a lot of osteolysis, malunited fractures of the acetabulum and pelvis, acute acetabular injuries in the elderly, and fused hips. We will see some examples later on in the talk. So these challenges are because of the presence of severe, severely disrupted anatomy. More often than not, there is arbitration of anatomical landmarks when you open it up. There is obscure tail. There is ill-defined iliopistial and iliopubic lines. So this makes the entire anatomy very difficult to locate. The dislocation rates are pretty high. Uh, uh, that's uh, one of the challenges. Newer technologies like computer navigation, robotics, 3D printing, etc., may enhance surgical outcome, but has limited availability with the surgeons. So why is the cup position important? Let's go to the basics. It is important so that we can avoid impingement. We can produce good range of movement, stability, abductor muscle strength, gait limb lengths, noise generation, wear loosening, and cup failure. Uh, defining the cup position, we need to define the depth. Now, the depth is very much individualized uh, and specific to a problem in the hip joint. If the acetabulum is shallow, one needs to medialize. If the uh, acetabulum belongs to a robust person, you need to choose an anatomical position. So medialization as well as excessive lateralization, they all have their problems. Height has to be adjusted. The super inferior position has to be adjusted. Uh, proper angular placement and in inflammation and version is important. Otherwise, there will be tenodesis, tenopathies. Uh, edge loadings and so on and so forth. So one has got to be very precise as far as the placement of the cup is concerned. So <clears throat> the Lenwick safe, uh, safe zone uh, has, um, is what one should be aiming for, which is 5 to 25 degrees of antiversion and 30 to 50 degrees of inclination. Anything beyond this, would result into frequent dislocations and would not be a stable hip. Templating, templating is an important dimension in, uh, in planning the surgery. And one should be very careful because the uh, initial templating is what decides about your cup placement, whether you need uh, allografts, autographs, where to fill, fill, where not to fill, whether you know, other adjuncts are... Uh, uh, are useful or not, and you do need to maintain the offsets. So all that is possibly roughly calculated by doing a proper templating initially. Also, positioning of the patient, to my mind, is very important. I think the surgeon should do this himself so that there is no pelvic tilt. With every pelvic tilt you create while positioning, you will alter your version, and that will be uh, not one of the not what is desirable. So if there is a huge man with a, with a big offset already, and if you medialize such cups, you are creating a shorting of the abductor arm and geopardizing this hip. So this is, uh, so the cup should be in uh, anatomical position as far as possible, though it is it depends on the merit of each and every um, you know acetabulum that we see. Now intraoperatively, tail is important. Right? If you can see the tail, most of the most Sometimes it could be obscured, but most of the times it is visible. If it is not visible just in case, then acetabular sulcus is there, or at least the obturator foramen is there, 
the superior part can be uh, used as an alignment guide to place your cup but tail is the most important part and the cup should sit just parallel to the tail as far as possible the other important thing to consider is the combined antiversion which should rest between 30 and 45 degrees now coming on to paprosky's classification type 1 and 2 possibly are not uh, that problematic it is type 3 a b and type 4 where lots of reconstruction and proper placement of acetabular cup and reconstruction is desired so as i say top one a type 1 type 2 where there is minimal bone loss can be easily you can do some patchwork with bone grafts and either put a larger cup even a millimeter even a centimeter or two of a of a of a higher cup a higher hip center doesn't really make much of a difference and that is a allowance that can be allowed but coming on to massive bone losses in type 3 b or type uh, 4 you need uh, all gadgetry to to reconstruct these hips you need all kinds of you know things in your armamentarium which we will discuss shortly four landmarks which are which are important while we are uh, putting the cup in position the collars line to know the integrity of the medial wall the acetabular tear drop shows us the integrity of the medial wall and inferior portion of the anterior and posterior columns the ischial lysis and the vertical migration jute and luternal views to my mind are important to see the columns and ct scan is a synchronon absolutely necessary uh, to embark upon any acetabular reconstruction that you might like to consider so what is there in the armamentarium for acetabular reconstructions the jumbo cup it's a big savior and in small to medium defects uh, a little bit of grafting here and there and a jumbo cup can actually help you out with, uh, with a lot of things it can centralize your uh, center of rotation uh, it uh, and it can really reconstruct in a very uh, in a very good manner so jumbo cup is a good adjunct when you are considering doing replacement uh, reconstruction of the acetabulum then bird schneider cages i think all of us know it and they are absolutely vital to keep the cup lateralized and its anatomical position uh, if there are massive defects in the medial wall you require uh, there is a lot of distortion you require a lot of bone grafting or impaction bone grafting then this is the thing which is going to sit on the on the mouth of the acetabulum and guide you where to put your cup in the right position so you can anatomically place your cup within the within the within this device octopus uh, cage is a cup cage construct basically and it was very popular some time back now it's because it is difficult to apply so it is its use is not all that popular but i think it is one of the very good uh, devices and if one can handle it well so this this keeps the cup well lateralized uh, this is a porous coated cup which is ex, which is fixed on to this uh, it gives time for the medial wall to heal so if there are massive medial wall defects or column defects then this is a very uh, ideal uh, contraption to be used in serious acetabular reconstructions the impaction bone grafting is a technique i think which uh, every division surgeon or arthroplasty surgeon who is interested in um uh, in, re- in, in reconstruction of the acetabulum must uh, know and uh, it is uh, good to have a bone mill in the department and on the table coming on to the trabecular metal this these are the modern cups of today and are very widely used so you can see that they can fill up almost all defects there are various cones and columns uh, sorry the uh, various cones and columns which can be used reconstructing the columnar defects and if you have a central defect they can be plugged in very nicely with these wedges and a trabecular metal cup can be fixed very comfortably here in zones which are bad which are osteoporotic which um, have which are deficient in bone stock and this could be a very useful adjunct likewise if there are transverse fractures of the acetabulum then cup cage construct sorry then cup cage construct could be a very useful thing in the armamentarium 
Then coming on to the dual mobility cup, this this is a very special and a unique uh, appliance, uh, especially useful when version is a problem. When you have difficulties in deciding the version, the dual mobility cup could could come handy, and it is very useful because of its big jump height. It is a very stable implant and should be there in the armamentarium. And this is what we were talking talking about the other day. Sorry, I'm. Sorry about this. Just take me a second to do it. Yeah. So this is a Peter Bryan cup. This is again a cup cage construct, as you see on the right side of the screen, and it has got a very robust um, uh, uh, cage. This cage is uh, 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 is porotic at the back, and it can fix onto the mouth of the acetabulum very beautifully. It it is an answer to major acetabular defects. It can fill in most of the defects. You can put place bone grafts at the back. and this cup can be adjust, adjusted in six various directions to suit the most stable you know construct of the hip joint so i think it is one of the, it is expensive though but uh, something very useful and unique and should be uh, mentioned and kept in the armamentarium now spinal pelvic dissociation is a problem because the version changes when you are sitting and standing if you have a rigid spine or a flexible spine while standing and sitting there would be uh, versional problems and it's a big headache calculating the pelvic uh, uh, index now pelvic index is calculated by pelvic tilt and uh, sacral slope so it is a very difficult calculation and i think much beyond the um, uh, the scope of a ordinary orthopedic surgeon i think my my advice here is to use a dual mobility cup whenever you confront with serious spinal problem a uh, lot of lordosis or lot of kyphosis instead of calculating these angles and trying to calculate what kind of a version you would like to create it is i think safe to use a dual mobility cup to obviate such a problem so coming on to the dysplastic hips this i think is the biggest uh, problem that we uh, encounter in our problems while reconstructing these hips we all know crevice classification so one or two is not a big problem excepting a little shallow acetabulum which can be taken care of it is type 3 and 4 which which are uh, you know where the head is uh, grossly subluxed and there are major acetabular defects which require major reconstruction also at the same time uh, osteotomies of the femur so these are the various way, ways where the cup has to be reconstructed and uh, supralateral or superior acetabular grafts have to be used allo grafts have to be used sometimes shells are important so these are various ways in which with which you can uh, construct these severe defects uh, sometimes the acetabulum could be so shallow that you need to do osteotomy of the medial wall and actually push in the cup into the pelvis so that the cup gets a good coverage and you have a stable construct So these are some of the examples. This is a dysplastic hip in a midget. She was just two and a half feet in height, but had severe osteoarthritic changes in both hip joints. And these lines are very vital. So um, in in a deformed hip, they would be all hair wire. They would not be parallel. Parallel. Uh, the lower one is the ischial line. The middle one is the line which. Uh, bisects the two tear drops and the superior line should be at the superior border of the acetabulum so once the hip is reconstructed and you have placed your cup in the right anatomical position those lines should become parallel so here you can see we had to devise some special cups here cups here and could manage to construct this hip joint with with uh, mini cups and mini stems and mini everything uh and she has gone on with these hips for nearly 20 years this is these are the problem ones you know this is these are ignored or you know um 
dysplastic hips which uh, have been taken care of earlier in their lives with this shelf or with this uh, um, you know, osteotomy with angular osteotomy pelvic support osteotomy so they would pose problems they become painful later on and come to back to you for reconstruction of those so you need to uh, uh, identify the acetabulum in its native place the footprint would always be there the footprint would always be there some kind of a lead mark would always be there or otherwise you can choose the uh, the the uh, the superior notch of the obturator foramen uh, as a landmark and start reaming medially under imaging under image control that is very important it requires massive um, uh, allograft which you can see on the top here that we place a lot of allografts here try to reconstruct this give it some kind of a shape um, put uh, put a cup as anatomically as possible uh, shorten the femur and we land it up with this kind of thing now this is not a bad looking uh, cup uh, but everything has to be reamed properly uh, if you can't find any other landmark the best is to ream in the direction of the sacroiliac joint but make sure you have enough allograft to cover it on the top and if you can slightly close the cup where there are proximal femoral deficiencies as we created in this uh, in this hip then all the more the hip will be much more stable this is another one a bilateral cdh came to us from iraq here the cup was implanted in the ilium erroneously and it flew away into the uh, ilial fossa here and this is this is where now the cup is lying right so and this is the native native acetabulum so we had to go in and get the uh, cup into the native uh, uh, this thing and in the uh, in we had the footprints of the uh, old acetabulum we recreated the acetabulum there put massive bone grafts on the top and we had to deskeletonize the, uh, the the shaft in order to bring the head down a lot of massive deskeletonization of the soft tissue was done and we could very hardly uh, could manage to bring the head back into the acetabulum but at a cost of stretching the sciatic nerve which took nearly 2 years to partly recover so that was a problem here she is now getting ready for the second stage and we will see when can we can do it these are epiphyseal displaces of the head so nothing much in this the acetabulum doesn't remain disturbed it is just like a primary uh, acetabulum and one can go in and cre uh, create an anatomical cup here so not much of a sweat in these regions these are burnt out old septic arthritic changes uh, the cup as you can see is just rudimentary but the footprints are available you can outline partly the anterior and the posterior walls you open up you osteotomize the femur and uh, very carefully dream the acetabulum we fractured it partly but it never actually mattered you could manage to uh, put the cup down in its anatomical position the best that we could we shortened the femur tried and created the reasonable offset and it worked well for us for quite some time likewise again burnt out septic arthritis where there is rudimentary acetabulum but still the outlines can be maintained can be seen and one has to do this under imaging so under image guidance one can very nicely medialize the cup and can angulate it as well as uh, incline, incline it to a desirable position as well as uh, uh, create a version uh, the one that you want so this again would be is a very stable construct and i don't think the anatomy is much changed and it it is achievable provided you follow the footprints and you reem in the right direction if you've got nothing else no other landmark the best would be to uh, follow the sacroiliac joint and i don't think you would go wrong so this is another some similar kind a burnt out septic arthritis uh, hardly any you know uh, this thing acetabular walls that you can see but but footprints are there of the old native acetabulum and one can ream through under imaging again see where the collars line is stop at the medial uh, wall just before the medial wall angulate inclinated and you would not have uh, much problems obviously the supra uh, the, the 
the yellow graph is an absolute uh, uh, you know necessity in creating the acetabulum there so i think you should have enough bone stock ready to be used wherever required so coming on to protrusions uh, this is another big problem this is a traumatic uh, protrusion uh, in a in a young chap he was just about 18 19 years old then and we didn't have a lot of armamentarium with us so we um, excised the head and we did an extensive impaction bone grafting in this area so hard that almost immediately we could fix a cup there this is a cementless cup and we the we really had a good amount of bone bone with us uh, and a bone mill and this impaction bone grafting came out to be so well that we could immediately put a uh, a, a cup there uh, i know it is a bit uh, you know off it, it is a open cup but still it did well it is about 14 years now and is still okay with the uh, with the hip another one where there is massive osteolysis of the cup the cup was done some about uh, 15 to 16 years back but he just ignored himself he continued to live in pain he fractured the acetabulum and the entire thing went into shambles so such a big defect of course one to the modern day today one can use um, um, uh, 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 porous cups so one can use the uh, what do you call uh, the special cups uh, i'm not getting the name <laughs> just now the trabecular cup sorry the trabecular cups but we didn't have one at that time and the cost was phenomenal so what we had handy was the birch schneider cage we did a good impaction bone grafting at the back and created a niche for the uh, for this contraption the birch schneider cage and we could put a cup quite anatomically and it is still doing okay so what do we do when we have severe acetabular fractures one of the wall is intact and the other wall is totally mushed up so in such cases what one needs to do is to just make a little space there go in because they are very painful they are immobile they cannot move you need to do something to the acetabulum you can't leave it as it is so go inside create a space in in those broken fragments put a a, a birch schneider cage or any other such device and you implant a cup in its correct anatomical position that you can see leave it alone as it is they become comfortable the pain lessens over a period of time they can take turns nursing becomes easier gradually the fractures will unite you need not bother or put them in any position they are okay all by themselves likewise major pelvic fractures transverse fractures i am sorry for the quality of this x-ray on the left side but this was a major you know both column fractures and fracture of the pelvis as well somebody did a good reconstruction and left the hip as it is so it is good to just fix the acetabulum concentrate on the acetabulum forget about reducing the the dislocated head and later on once everything is healed go in take a part of the um, uh, the implant out and do a proper reconstruction and uh, um, placement of the cup and do a proper hip replacement so of course the person may have to live in agony for about 4 to 6 months till the time the fractures are healing but once the columns are all healed up i mean they, the plants can be taken out and hip can be revisited and a very uh, easy reconstruction can be and this is again a very old lady had a fall lots of osteolysis osteolysis in the acetabular region you just want to give her comfort as much as possible and these are retention cups so you uh, put put a little mesh put plenty of bone grass whatever you can at the back and cement this cup it is a stable cup uh, and not a very ideal cup but for a 90 year old with so much of osteolysis nothing more can be done so this possibly is an answer to keep them mobile for a, uh, short distances and to keep them pain free then if you have pelvic discontinuity this is what will happen the uh, the the cup will dislodge at some point or the other and then you have a big problem in hand this is where the cup cage construct because reconstructing a column becomes a very tedious task it becomes a very major task and if you have these contraptions the cup cage constructs or the one that i showed you the peter bream cup they are the, they are the answer to this problem 
such uh, contraptions can very easily be fixed onto the mouth of the acetabulum and you can place your cup anatomically in any desired you know um, uh, variance inclination and version and uh, this has this for uh, this has come out to be a very stable hip and still doing well again non unions in in the columns it this could become a problem and uh, uh, this can well be curated you leave the plate the implants as the, the plates as it is can curate out the uh, non unions pack them nicely with bone grafts and put a anatomically placed cup and that sorts things out this is just a normal uh, neglected dislocation which had been there for a very long time so this is just a usual you know straight forward cup replacement nothing much about it and then we come to fused hips especially the ankylosed ones they can cause problems they all want to walk and you can make them walk uh, the trick here is to take a sizable segment out from the neck do a neck osteotomy in a way that a sizable segment comes out from it and then you have a footprint of the original head there you ream into that head under imaging if possible uh, in the direction of the sacroiliac joint and try and create a niche to accommodate this smallest possible cup and this is what we did some 16 17 years back uh, and he still does quite all right with this kind of a fixation another burnt out septic arthritis similar problem totally ankylosed and fused hips you take a sizable chunk of uh, of the uh, of the neck from there create a space there and through that space you your guide is the head your guide is the the remaining head and that tells you where to ream and you can ream uh, uh, in accurately and you can put in these cups without any problems revisions of course is a big chapter on revisions and you know any anything can be revision but migration is a very common problem when you are doing these revisions inadequately fixed cups shallow shallowly fixed cups that right, would migrate and then it becomes a problem so again the dictum is you bring them down and put in massive allograft at the top you can see an allograft there which has organized which is sealed all by itself in about 6 to 8 months time leaving the cup in the most desirable and anatomical position and uh, this is how it should be handled likewise another example of massive osteolysis after um, um, replacement surgery and again you do the same thing you take everything out freshen up the acetabulum use massive sorry there's a little obscured picture but yes massive allograft at the top and the cup stays where you want it to stay there could be situations where nothing can be done patient is fairly comfortable despite all this i think it's time to take a chill pill you can't do the impossible at times so it is best to leave them alone as they are so i think i've said enough and if there are any questions i'll be very happy to uh, answer lalit is havin with us havin is here yeah yes, thank sir. you yeah thank you dr pradeep you covered the uh, majority of the things and we had one question in the chat box the types of acetabular cups in different pathologies i think dr anil would be also covering it would you like to uh, add something now uh see have been i'll be covering majority of types of cup yeah i think we'll leave it till the end yeah yeah, yeah. that's right so we we'll, we'll be talking a lot leave about implants yeah. fine any other questions please it was a great talk let's talk uh, can i ask a question dr haven yeah please do okay so my question is we often uh, have uh, cases of acetabular fractures of different sorts and uh, uh, there is a view that it's better to fix the fractures with the posterior columns or anterior columns or uh, you know any such and and then do it later so how many of uh, the faculty uh, go uh, at the first uh, uh, do it uh, acutely fix i mean do a replacement Uh, along with the uh, uh, fracture fixations together yeah. at one go the, yeah this is the i mean it should really be done that way if there are massive column fractures and you don't have these contractions these contractions are pretty good but massive column fractures i think should be handled independently they should be fixed first and then you can revisit the hip at a later date that is absolutely acceptable not a problem there at all 
वॉट अबाउट अदर फैकल्टी है so in low demand patients like i we do not want to have a second surgery we will use a cage and massive grafting and then fix them nicely nowadays contraptions are available so what dr sharma said is preferable but if a patient is 75 80 and we don't want we keep on getting such patients we do not want second surgery and then you can do good fixation using cage using plate do massive bone grafting and then you can do your primary thing No issue, okay. but only thing you have to explain to the patient. Okay. Thank you, Rinder. So my uh, my approach has actually changed ever since we started doing that approach from the front over the pubic pu- uh, over the um, o- over the pubic tubercle. So if you can slide a plate, I'm talking about the bad pelvic fracture. If you can slide a plate, see, I'm still left with virginal planes. Whether I do a posterior approach or a anterolateral approach, so we actually done quite a few work. Quite a bit of work in which we've actually managed to go on the uh, on 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 the top, slide the plate in, and just come out with whatever best we can. Because you know, leaving the pelvis flying around is makes uh, second surgery very very difficult. So we we've given to the idea that look, we won't be able to reconstruct it well, but slide the plate, get some stability. That's the best way to go in back early. So then we can go back early by even two and a half to three months. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Fine. So I uh, I'm sorry for the initial start that uh, in the computer. I'll just uh, briefly mention the rationale in primary THR. Establum has already been covered by Dr. Pradeep. So for the various etiologies of the hip. lots of efforts had been made earlier with not much success till the time we all know so chanley gave us the operation of the century it was a cemented monoblock thr it was intended for a good function but longevity became a question mark because of lot of loosening establer side changes and issues connected so we must understand what are the rationale to decide implants in primary thr THR, as we all know, is a highly successful surgery. All, over a million cases are done all over the world, and registries are showing extremely good survivorship. But the number one reason of revision still remains loosening, and we all need to work on it. The advantage with my talk on primary THR is I am dealing with a virgin anatomy. Most of the times, the bone stock is intact. Most of the times, there is no hardware, so the chance of infection is also. to the lowest but the orthopedic surgeon of today is having to face a lot of change scenarios the expectation of the patient has changed they want to do all activities they want us to address all the various types of pathologies and the expectancy of life is increasing so we need to choose the correct option lot of choices are there regarding polarity modularity materials and all that but the choice has to be made and that would be made only if we understand the basics a little so the my main talk is going to be about the increased longevity what modalities help the standard metals and the materials which have been used cobalt chromium has always proven well in cemented hip we still use the stems various shapes and sizes titanium was used but as a stem it did not give us the desired long term outcomes it is good for resistance to corrosion but it has very very poor sort of uh, bending and fatigue strength for the surfaces a uh, new metal of the group of titanium zirconium was used and the surface finish was extremely good and it was abrasion resistant and it has been put to use in hips quite a lot so whenever a new implant has to be intu- introduced it has to undergo the lab studies it has to go million cycle tests then it has to be documented against well documented prosthesis and finally has to be tallied in the implant registry in one of the studies it was shown that all the new implants almost 30% were having worse outcomes compared to the ones already in use so 
as a surgeon we need to improve the anchorage we need to have a good cement or cementless use of fixation which we all know the cement needs to interdigitate and fill up all the crevices so that it has a extreme good hold with the cancellous bone like i said all the shape of the femoral stems we had the shape log force log line plan anatomical so many stems were tried but consistent in various hands the results were not the same i used the polished stem i find good results with that but for my other colleagues we need to understand this is a old good classification which i used if you see on the x ray that your femur is a champagne flute sort of a canal then a uncemented can be used because sometimes we are unnecessary going in for the uncemented stems and later on on table we land up in trouble so if we have identified that it's a very very wide canal be ready for doing good cementation you will get very very good results but for cementation some basic things are necessary for me to mention try and use a pulse lavage on the femur side also do a very very good bone preparation you must use a cement restrictor i always use a cement gun indian cement guns are available these days they use just one packet of cement and you distill fill upwards so that the entire canal is well filled once the canal has been filled up simple digital pressure will give us good pressurization we don't have the silicon pre pressurizers easily available but with your pressure of the thumb you can pressurize the cement have a good interdigitation vacuum mixing in my practice i don't use those who have the facility that is highly recommended why because you want to take away all those voids so that the cement is strong and consistent all over the place so again as a repetition you do a good lavage as you can see on the picture if you have not done a pulse lavage it will still have some debris use the gun as a habit please use the gun and fill from the distal upwards you will get a feel of the cement and then you will be able to easily manage a good cementation on the acetabulum side circumferential good exposure is required like this you need to open the entire cancellous bone it should be a starry sky sort of a picture lavage it well put the cement i usually roll up a glove and use it as a pressurization device once i have done the pressurization then i put the cemented cup i've just got a photograph if you do a good pressurization this is the sort of good interdigitation is what you want a good cemented system with a follow up of almost 4 12 years as you can see cemented stems will have a very very good long survivorship one of the studies from exeter also showed the same in a very high percentage of patients at 33 years of age so cemented stems are suitable in obese patients they have been shown to have better results in dysplastic hips in osteoporotic patients they must be used because you will get a very very good fixation to the stem by which you can mobilize the patient soon enough they obviously will have lower intra operative fractures and in india they are cheaper but there have always been a tug of war between the use of the cemented and the uncemented stem the cementless stem the fixation depends on where you are getting the fit either in the neck metaphyseal metadia or diaphyseal the short stems which came in vogue and were pushed hard did not stand the test of time some examples i have brought 
I used to call them the Doberman stems, the stems without the tail. Personally, I hardly use them. And over a time period, they have sort of faded away. Numerous designs with their functions, collared, proximal coated, fluted stems, stems which are having modularity regarding version. So many stems in cement less are available. You must see the x-ray of the person. The area that you expect where the interlock will form, only then use that stem. Otherwise, if you think a distal area is stronger, you will need a distal foot stem as a rule. Surface coating, partial or complete, these stems are also available. They have their own success story. In, I think in hands of all the orthopedic surgeons, it is better to practice on a particular type of unsupported stem, get used to it and change only if it is indicated that if there is proximal deficiency and you need a distal fit, then only change. Otherwise, get your hands set on a particular stem. According to studies, yes, we all know that the cemented stem it immediately bonds within six to 10 minutes. Whereas a cementless stem, you need time. You, it will take around a year for the bone growth to complete. And then the patient can be allowed full independent usage as well as activity. The benefits of the uncemented stem has been shown that the revision rates are lower at 10 years. Femoral loosening is low, osteolysis is not common once it is well held. Obviously, the chances of fat embolism during this surgery is much, much lower compared to the cemented system. And the problem of the bone cement implantation syndrome also is practically nil. But whatever implant on the femur side you choose, it has to be well done. A cementation has to be uniform in all the seven zones. If you are using a monoblock or a modular stem, you have to follow all the principles that your point of entry is to be correct. The stem should not be in varus. Try and use a distal centralizer so that the stem remains absolutely in line. If you are using an uncemented system, it should be very, very tight fit. While you are doing the reamings, you will get a feel by the uh, rasp once it is well engaged that yes, now I'm getting a feel of it. When you are hammering it in, your ears will get the noise and the sound that now if I cross to the next size, my femur will shatter. So the main complication while doing a cementless stem is femoral fractures, which we don't want. The other thing which I want to mention regarding increased longevity is wear reduction. Few points about the bearing surfaces. We all know we have hard on soft, like the metal on poly or the ceramic on poly, hard on hard, which used to be metal on metal. And now we use ceramic on ceramic. The wear factors are so many of them on the implant as all, also the in vivo side. And the problem used to be in the cemented side because the amount of volumetric particles which were generated because of the volumetric wear led to the osteolysis and loosening. This is how the process of the ultra high molecular weight polyethylene is made and then machined into the final form. The problems with the traditional polyethylene used to be, we all know the degeneration oxidative and the wear, and that used to reduce the mechanical properties and increase the wear. It was found that radiation was in air being done, which was one of the main causes and that got replaced. And then a lot of attempts were made to make the poly stronger by the process of cross-linking for my friends. The cross-linking, we irradiate the poly, it generates free radicals also, which need to be taken away. You can see in this, once the irradiation has been done, cross-links are made, but at the same time, some free radicals get generated, which need to be annealed. 
to a temperature less than 130 and this increases the cross link density so this process has to be repeated many times to make it stronger so this has shown to decrease the wear and increase the survivorship of the poly that we use so it's extremely low wear the absence of the degeneration is there right and the cost is affordable so this is a very very good part of the implant gadgetry that we have now it has probably some clinical significance to the more biologically active particles which might be getting generated to reduce the free radicals vitamin e incorporation has been started and it is being seen to give us better mechanical properties but while this was all going on ceramic and ceramic also started having lot of interest because the type of ceramic the quality of ceramic had been improved and all the complications related to breakage squeaking had been taken care of and now we could get very very large heads by which we could reduce the wear further and over the generations now many studies have shown that in mid to long term ceramic on ceramic bearings are having extremely low osteolysis or no osteolysis giving rise uh, giving rise to long term benefit and survivorship of our ths but it has to be very exact while we are seating the insert of the ceramic liner if we see the chart the wear rates of the various uh, bearing couples the metal on conventional polyethylene was high and the lowest we are seeing in ceramic on ceramic but most of our in most of our uh, orthopedic surgeon doing joints it is either metal head on a cross link polyethylene with vitamin uh, e or a ceramic on a cross link polyethylene which we use which also have very low wear rate if the size of the head is large we will have very very good range of movement low wear and as you can see the risk of dislocation disc, uh, dislocation will also be very low all these things put together if you see the trend is going more towards using large diameter heads and the bearing surfaces of ceramic on ceramic or ceramic on poly to give long term survivorship so now as a orthopedic surgeon you have so many implant options you have to choose which you will choose in the young or the old patient depending on the patient's problem the patient's bone anatomy bone quality and also how long you want that implant to survive i have shown some examples out here for you to see and uh, probably enjoy that this patient went into avian after the neck fema and needed a total hip replacement a press fit good uncemented system was done patient was made mobile with a long long follow up now of almost uh, 15 plus years another case a 64 year old guy and a uh, 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 hybrid total thr was done for this gentleman and mobilized immediately this uh, young boy of 30 uh, now underwent uh, had bilateral avian at that time his left side was not so bad uh, uncemented thr was done he was happy with it came back after 6 years once the left hip started troubling him and after uh, uncemented on the other side too leading a near normal life another patient of a bilateral avian almost nearly equal stage at one sitting you can see a very very good fit stem both the sides and a total hip done bilateral at the same time this gentleman had a ankylosing tendency the left was nearly ankylosed the right was almost fused bilateral hip was done on the 1st of january of the year 2019 he wanted to start that year with a bang probably 
and he was so happy with this hip that his life actually started moving to normalcy this is another patient as you can see 24 year old bilateral bony ankylosed hip and bony ankylosed knees he wanted to commit suicide because he had fused 4 years back basic activities also he could not do uh, bilateral at one sitting both hips were done he was happy with it once he was hemodynamically stable had started to gently sort of stand he forced us to also do the knees after a gap of 6 weeks this is almost now going to be 15 years and he's leading a near normal life the benefit of a well done joint replacement this girl came from uh, outside she had a road traffic accident with multiple surgeries done both for the acetabulum as well as for the femur unfortunately the acetabulum had not been had not been reduced fully and as you can see on the ct cuts she had quite advanced arthritis of the hip joint with lot of pain including night night cries you can see multiple cuts on the thigh and we had to address the issue of the plate implant which were already there so the, the femur side the screws which were coming in our way were remo removed but the plate was retained i did not try and attempt to go for a very long stem because the canal was blocked further on so i compromised for this stem length the standard stem and continued the plate to remain with some screws acting as a bridge on the acetabulum side one of the plates was removed a multi hole cup was used the uh, head which had been osteotomized was morselized grafts were put and with that cup we had a good rim fit plus stability by the screw which were there in the shell of the multi hole she returned back to her country and is on a yearly check with me why the whatsapp sending her x rays uh, till now her hip is doing fine the thr she is happy with it the activities are near normal now this is part of the covid uh, thing which i had a 66 year old gentleman a diagnosed case of diabetes hypertension and chronic kidney disease also had tuberculosis of the spine years back for which he had been fixed he fell down at home and had a acetabulum fracture he went to the hospital but unfortunately he tested positive at admission for covid so his acetabulum took a back seat now only covid treatment was happening and then he was discharged unfortunately he developed a dvt in the same side on the same side from the external iliac till the femoral when he came to us and by then the vascular team was treating and it was more than 5 weeks already over when we did the ct scan you can see that he had a impacted frag fragment which had totally gone uh, inwards and made a dent into the femoral head so any chance of reconstruction of this hip was not going to give him a pain free mobile hip for a long time so a decision was made to first fix the anterior column and then do the thr use the uh, the the cage on 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 the wall and then did lot of bone grafts after which we did a very very nice and strong total hip patient has started doing toe touch we are actually wanting the graft to mature this is almost a month plus as of now so we have to keep it guarded and closely monitored for the grafts to glue up before which we allow full weight bearing this lady 72 year old went for a holiday and while alighting off the escalator abroad had this acetabulum fracture 
was flown back home and a limited fixation of the establum was done and after that a traction was applied on skeletal traction and kept in bed for 2 months after 2 months this is the picture that her establum had not healed and she had also developed a fracture neck femur two more months lapsed she is a she was a steroid dependent sarcoid and at 4 months post index injury is when she came to us the establum had still not united we counseled her and uh, did a allograft with a, a octopus cage with a total hip on cemented stem this was done probably 13 years back and till the time she was alive she was walking well with this hip so to conclude my talk the aim in a primary total hip is to restore the normal biomechanics preserve as much of native bone to obtain a stable fixation and must aim to reduce wear for a mobile painless stable long duration thr thank you so much so uh we we have one question in the chat box dr sahu from odisha is asking are thr implants mri compatible good in sahu sahu the answer to that is you see if you're talking about a titanium titanium uh, a magnetic substance it's not a magnetic substance but the issue is no implant will actually jump out of the hip if you put him into an mri scan so it's actually if you're doing an mri scan of whatever thing you can actually do it i think we're all aware of sequences like maverick or something in which we are we're going and actually doing mris for these implants so don't worry so much whenever you get a quest query about some lab calling up okay, i have got a knee replacement can i do go ahead and do it we're talking about loose loose pellets loose uh, loose screws St- uh, or the old fashioned stents which are a problem the hips knees well fixed nails plates are not a problem so the question is actually finished not don't i mean it's not even worth raising it f- from from now on and yes you can add extra antibiotics to the cement if you wish there are lots of options available you got vancomycin tobramycin gentamicin people come with people have added kefi- uh, kefiroxim as 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 well um uh, sorry uh, how have uh, next is i think for you is uncemented fully coated yeah in impact. the antibiotic in the antibiotic uh, gurinder probably uh, the liquid antibiotics should not be added to bone cement because they will change the strength and the setting of the cement uh, you have asked a question what extra antibiotics you can add yes powders of antibiotics which are thermostable are to be used you can add to maximum of 10% of the powder not more than that and you also have to be sure regarding the renal function of the patient if you are adding any of the uh, medicines which will affect the kidney because they will keep leaching out from the cement and you will have no control over them another question part of the question is best cement available Uh, like we said you want a low viscosity cement you want a cement which is more liquidy for a longer time while you are working and you are injecting in either on the femur side or on the establum side so get acquainted with what your dealer has it should be a low viscosity cement usually low viscosity cement will give you a time working time of around 11 to 12 minutes if it is a antibiotic impregnated uh, cement it will give you 16 to 18 minutes dr anil would you like to add anything to this no no you have answered very appropriately no doubt about it but 
you are right one should not unnecessarily add uh, antibiotic if not required because that will definitely change the lifespan of the cement definitely right if required yes one can go ahead the last part of his question is is uncemented fully coated femoral implants better than proximally coated if your quality of bone in your metaphyseal area is good a proximally coated loading implant in my mind is a good choice you are wanting to address other issues where your proximal part is not so strong you will have to have a distal fit implant or a fully coated implant dr pradeep is there would like to add something sir so if we have no more questions or comments from the uh, other ec members i will invite professor anil aroda for his talk professor aroda is head and principal director of max super speciality hospital harpurganj he has keen interest in joint replacement especially revision surgeries dr aroda please i am going to share my screen please sir is it is it visible have it is just connecting just give us a moment sir it is visible am i audible it's visible yeah you are audible you can go to slide show now sir your answer yeah i'm doing it on thank you thank you to you for inviting me for this topic very close to my heart implants for revision in totally parthoplastic So, friends, whenever you are doing a revision, totally parthoplasty, please keep this philosophy in mind. Especially in a younger patient, keep in mind possibility of next revision. That's not the final thing you are going to do. Now, on the vestibular side, the choice of implant will largely depend on degree of bone loss, the past performance of that very particular implant, as well as below two factors as well. what are we looking for we are looking for stable long term fixation well positioned component and the restoration of biomechanics this is what we are looking for there are there's a list of options available part of them have been covered by with by, by my previous speakers i'll be also covering them one by one just a small reminder of the process classification of bone loss on acetabular side the most commonly use classification system please remember in town supportive cemetless shelves i think they are the workhorse of acetabular revisions undoubtedly the prerequisite is that you need at least 50% of supportive and viable bone on the acetabular side these are the two common ones used you get initial stability by press fit and with supplemental screws you may require bone grafts they show they have shown excellent long term results after 20 years in literature one has to be very careful in revision scenario avoid vertical placement of the cup in an attempt to improve coverage just one example this was 13 years done this was done 13 years back a rheumatoid lady and the revision was done by simply bone grafting and using a primary cement plus shelves th done 18 years back patient for revision on the acetabular side the femoral side was well fixed this is type 2a paparoski this is a clinical picture after removal of acetabular shell and we can we could place another uh, cement less acetabular shell along with the bone grafting i mean am i audible because it might it is showing internet connection Stable. Your connection is a little unstable, sir. But we can hear you, boss. Another Keep patient. Uh, so another patient type two uh, paparoski again, bone graft and primary cementless hemispherical shell used along with screws. Another option is isolated acetabular liner exchange for lysis behind the cup. One can go ahead with isolated liner exchange. in well fixed well positioned undamaged non infective stable shell where the intact 
there is intact locking mechanism even after removal of liners. Just be sure that both the components have good track record. For low demand patients with damaged locking mechanism, one can still do a cemented liner. Just one example, done 15 years back, patient reported to us with uh, lysis of the trochanter because of polylysis, the head had moved up. There is lysis at the top, and this patient was subjected to change of the liner as well as grafting of the trochanter and fixation, and the patient did well. Isolated liner exchange is still a controversial modality, and the many surgeons prefer cup revision because of the following reasons. So it's your personal choice what philosophy do you belong to. Now, primary cementless hemispheres or cups will not serve your purpose. There is less than 50% contact with the horse bone or the receiver bone loss or there is significant superior bone deficiency. Now in such situations, highly porous acetabular cups, they come for the rescue because they can work even with 40% water. Highly porous cup because of higher porosity and higher coefficient of friction give you good initial stability. They are highly osteoconductive, so there's extensive and rapid bone in growth. They have less shielding, better modulus of elasticity, and the best part is you can drill and put additional screws in the horse bone wherever you want. They could be made of highly porous metal, like tantalum, or they can adjust the coating, like encryption. Tantalum is like the most widely used highly porous material, and it has physical properties, great physical properties, more similar to bone than any other prosthetic load-bearing metal. It comes in cups, you have augments, you have buttresses, shims, resistor, all shape and Dr. sizes, a lot of modularity. Dr. Anil, sorry to interrupt you. And you can use them in, yes, Sir, your slide is stuck at isolated liner exchange. Yes. Oh, because of internet connection, maybe. We could hear you, but this slide did not change. Oh, my God. No worries, boss. No worries. You're doing well. So... Slide showing is trabeculum metal augments now. You just tell me what all we have seen. I think you have seen this. Yes. Uh, isolated liner, yes, that is the slide yeah. which is on, sir. My God, it's not progressing. Just on share and share again. Who? Oh. Abin. Yeah, why? Yes, sir. Give me, I think let somebody else speak. Uh, let them let that couldn't speak and then in the meantime let me restart my internet connection. Give okay. me a minute. If, or if, if you can want, give me a minute, I'll take a minute to restart my internet connection, right? Sure, sir. Sure. Uh Gurinder, are you there? I'm there. I Give yeah. me a minute to restart and I'll restart my internet connection. Yeah. There's a question there from uh, Sachin Kumar Bihar. Yeah, Sachin is, uh, had asked, is there any report of uncemented stem fixed with cement? Sachin, uh, probably the surgeon went in and has opened this uncemented stem already and the canal was too loose. So uh, it is only done as a salvage, but it is not recommended because uh, uncemented stem will not be having the same sort of uh, 
uh, relationship to the cement mantle and it will fail quite early such and the answer is no you can't justify this it can be a mistake it can be because there was no other stem available you can think about all those things but there is no justification for using an uncemented and cemented it's it's a it's an accident which can happen but not not a biomechanically or a clinically justified thing i think the other question that is uh, from uh, dr rajeshwar is what the complications after surgery is that the question is what are the complications after total hip replacement is that the question i think avin i think i think lalit we will you will have to take this question in maybe another uh sort of session complications of surgery yeah. right. that seems to be a very broad uh, sort It's of a big, a big question and yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so rajeshwar we, we will answer you but probably in the subsequent sessions stay with us so mm -hmm. gurinder if you are ready please go i can i can start yeah okay so um hey go so um thank you so much for uh, for having me always uh, always fun always enjoyable being out here so uh, i'm trying to talk about what's trending in total hip replacement so you know in the first instance i thought look i'll, I'll pick up all those uh, theoretical slides on robotics and navigation and all but then you know it didn't seem to make sense it didn't seem to make sense because you know almost certainly most of us are not using them or are unlikely to use them in hip arthroplasty i can understand people using it in knee arthroplasty but hip arthroplasty definitely not something if you talk about robotics i think there are only about three or four robotic have available out here so i've tried to deviate away from them and i'm keeping it on something else so i'll tell you i'm talking about contemporary implants which are available so we know it's a successful surgery we know that the normal revision rate for this is is fairly low so if you look at the all the, all these studies which which are printed the rate comes out very very low but still there are issues i mean these are all the recalls which have been done in the last few years whether it was the asr cup from dipu whether it was the abg from striker whether it was the uh, zimmer durom the right medical conserve the smith and nephew birmingham hip surgeon so it's it's a controversial field but the thing about hip replacements is it's a very happening field i mean there's an almost a, something new coming out in hip very very quickly although as as i keep saying very successful surgery but still a new implant coming out regularly not so much in knee so if when you have a look at the new market you know you'll be very surprised about the little changes that have been made hip has been a sea of changes almost every season there's a there's a new something and these are the controversies which are still there how do you approach it the size of the head cement less cemented ceramic on ceramic and all those things the thing about hip surgeon seems to be they're quite okay with the idea of change so this is some of the new things that have come in and how people have adapted if you have a look at this five more frequently were i mean that is a huge uptake between the day of introduction and being well established so that's a huge number of new implants which are coming out and people are using them so 49% this is the american study 49% of the hips are done using a new stem 75% using a new cup so cup is what people are really looking for the cup is a problem that most of the people are having having a problem and it's actually happening very very rapidly people still changing very very quickly these are some of the, some of the new new things which are brought out and just to give you an idea these are the top 5 changes that happened during that period that we are talking about so the this is what i'm going to talk about in the in, in the next few minutes um what, what's changing in them what's trending in them nothing about cemented implants i think you heard how we talk about it cemented implants have been here to stay the only thing to note out there is nothing is changing much in cemented implants so the the best results that came out were from the original uh, the original exeter and the original chanlays after that we had the zimmer implant came out again all three implants have done very very well but nothing has changed over the last say about 10 years except for the cementation techniques or something but that's also mild kind of a change unfortunately i'm not going to talk about them but just to give you an idea cemented fixation works well so don't go away from here i know it's very very um it's it's very glamorous talking about uncemented ones but cemented fixation is here to say and it actually does very very well whether you look at the medicare population whether you look at the norwegian studies which have been published 
especially when you look at elderly people especially elderly women it actually works very very well the references are given below and remember these are 2020 references so i'm not quoting anything old and these are european and american study i'm not quoting an indian study out there when we're looking at this not there's anything wrong with indian study and here and here is a study which which looked at five international joint osteoplasty registries so overall a better fixation was achieved with a cement uh with a cemented and it works much better in younger people compared to the older people so they seem to outperform cementless fixation in the elderly so i'm not just saying comparable i'm saying they actually outperform in the australian registry it's about for the greater than 70 75 years of age early revision early revision cement cemented implants are doing much much better although after 3 months the balance neutral is out and the major thing that happens is one is one is fractured second is early aseptic loosening undetected early aseptic loosening is there so excellent outcomes yes for cementless as well but prosthetic fractures peri prosthetic fractures remain remain a cause the mayo registry clearly clearly you look at the 20000 patients talks about what what is the difference in the rate of early peri prosthetic fractures when you use a cemented or or a cementless and american joint replacement registry similarly cemented stems 2.76 time more likely to undergo revision I remember in the early so discuss it with your patients it's not just enough thing i only do uncemented i only do cemented kind of stuff and here's what is looking looking at the trends which are there so that's what i want to bring to your notice i've spoken a lot about cementless so the uncemented implants are actually growing and growing and the cemented implants are actually falling and when you come to the year 220 it actually goes down and this is the reason why it's happening for people younger than 50 years when you look at uncemented cups they do better for the um, for, for the patient not revised again in the 50 to 59 years the uncemented do cups still do better when you look at patients not revised cemented are remember we are talking about the younger people so the difference out there is for the younger people uncemented implants do better so with uncemented implants is trending now what are we talking about in terms of uncemented implants so things that are changing is we looking at reducing the backside wear which is happening between the liner and the cup we want to allow different surfaces so every uncemented cup is now looking at you need to get a a, a plastic liner a, a different type of plastic liners a ceramic liner can be brought in now everybody is talking about allowing a dual mobility liner to also go in we're all looking at the idea of porous coated surfaces in a higher coefficient of friction so the rougher cups are really really in so you want to give one cup which will give you an option of ceramic plastic and du- du- dual mobility plus giving you the option of using the different heads so what works now presently is what we talking about um high porosity more than 60% large pore sizes the pore should have even got connection with them low elastic modulus so you want elastic modulus comparable to that of the bone and you want a high friction you can almost sort of scrape your hand with the cup that's a kind of thing and you got these two two kinds of uh, rough and surfaces whether it's a porous plasma spray or a porous titanium coating i'm going to talk a little bit about that as well so let's look at what's available in your market right now so this is uh, this is striker so i'm going to mainly talk about the four big companies you, you know all the four big companies striker smith and nephew depu and zimmer biomed so striker has been selling this uh, the trident system for a while is a trident one is a trident two the trident two still hasn't uh, come into the market and they're actually make two kinds of cup one is a one is a full hemispherical and one is a sort of slightly more elliptical cup which is called the deep uh, which is called the psl so the technology in trident is actually a very time tested technology and what they've actually sort of done is increasing the coating and all and i'm going to talk about that a little bit and remember the other thing that cups should allow you is as a uh, no hole option a uh, cluster hole option a multiple hole option as well so and you need to sort of have these available if you are into a tricky situation otherwise the cluster hole will get you into pretty much anything remember do not use multi holes if you are going to use simple epithelioplasty uh, cases because you you don't want to reduce the surface area on which they they can actually interact so make sure you insist on a cluster or a no hole for the simple for the simple cases so the 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 coating should, should pretty much be similar to what the what the what the, what the, what the, what the uh, cancellous bone lo- looks like so now here we're going to talk about the peripheral esl cups which is the 
uh, the, the, the peripheral locking uh, system which is there from this so now when you do reaming in these cups the options are you can do a line to line reaming so ream 48 put in a 48 you can put in a you can ream 46 and put in a 48 or you can actually ream 49 and put in a 48 cup and that actually depends on what kind of a cup so the psl cup which which uh, which pretty much strike the wakes now has got this difference if you can see the difference is that the rim is flared out so what this really needs is an eccentric kind of a reaming of the lip of the astabulum so you want to widen the lip so if you're going to put in a 48 cup widen the lip by a till about 49 and there is a philosophy behind it which which people talk about so the hemispherical cup is going to sit deeper and are actually going to catch only when you touch the floor of it so you don't have that much of stress only on the rim you got enough stress all all over it the non hemispherical or the elliptical one that we talked about you underreamed it less so the stress is much more on the rim so the dual geometry is what we talking about in these kind of cups and they actually increase the stress stress fit at the rim the advantage of that is a lot of stress is taken out on the rim the advantage of that is that the bone preservation of the bone is better at the rim normally we know that the dome is not that that strong anyway because you've been reaming it out and everything so their philosophy was if you do that you would actually get at this thing unfortunately not proven by by most of the people the cup is a good one we've used it quite a few times and it's it's not something that people are recommending and nobody else is making it but it's something which is available i just want to draw your attention to what's called as the odep uh, which is the orthopedic data evaluation panel so this is the odep rating which the brits which the brits came out with so i'm telling you this so that whenever you actually want to use a cup change or process or something you can actually look at its odep rating and say what is the odep rating like so the stronger the evidence and longer term evidence is the two things that we are going to talk about the years of evidence are 3 5 7 10 13 15 those are the years the a or the b is the the whether it is a strong evidence or an acceptable evidence or no evidence the star is if there was a benchmark the benchmark is you should your revision should not be greater than 5% in 10, 10 years if you get that benchmark you get a star so just talking about the striker implants the trident which i just spoke to you about it's a 15a star so definitely a good selling implant the all the the the, the titanium is, is the covering which the striker is talking about and that it's a 10a kind of stuff again the the different uh, uh, the, uh, the different order order ratings remember the cemented one has a very similar one so the exeter also is the 15a star which is just about the best ranking which is which is available and all the all the striker cups are actually have done well Now, should you put a screw? Should you not put a screw? One thing that has been noted is is a high rate of osteointegration around the screw. Um, the and and if you although there are there are problems because the screw holes can actually allow the migration of wear particles and cause osteolysis and all. But the amount of osteointegration is actually better. What about using spikes, pegs, and all? The answer is they do definitely allow you better osteointegration. around the screw and around the screw and all except that sometimes they don't allow you to seat it properly and sometimes they can actually reduce the surface of contact but doesn't go in and then if you have to change it it sometimes causes a problem what about other companies so smith and nephew makes this r3 and the reflection cup i'm talking about the more contemporary the ones which have just been introduced so the r3 is the one which they really trying to sell right now so it's got a coating called stick tight it's got a uh, uh, asymmetric um, it's, it's got But a titanium powder coating, huge amount of porosity. You can put any any sort of a liner inside. You can support it any side of a head, and again, you can actually use it for different different top combinations. Reflection is the one which is just before this. This had what's called as a rough a rough coat porous coating, and again, different options are available. This has the spikes and all. The uh, Smith and Nephew is really now talking about R3 because the results of the R3 are actually coming out better. So what you have inside is a very polished surface. which is cobalt chrome and the outside of that is the stick tight technology which is basically titanium but it's sintered titanium not a plasma sprayed titanium so the coating is there but it's sintered and these are the things which are available the good thing that i can tell you what's uh, on the smith and nephew is a ceramic liner which has a steel rim a lot of times you will see a chipping which happens on the margin 
once the chipping starts, the, the liner can actually go, but the metallic one really has to stop it. How good is the stick tight coating? You can actually compare it in terms of the frictional coefficient between tantalum and stick tight. So it's a good material to use. What is the rating of this? The, re the reflection cup is a, is a 13A, the R3. It has been well, it introduced only 10 years back with a 10A star kind of a rating. So it's a fairly good rating to come. This is the new kid in the market as far as Zimmer is concerned. A great cup. I mean, this was introduced. G7 actually is because they introduced it simultaneously in the in, in, in it was like the G7 group summit kind of a stuff to introduce simultaneously in all these countries. Um, porous plasma spray uh, coating. They have a bone master technology, which is to say that there is an HA coating, but the HA coating doesn't smoothen the cup out. The HA coating actually is a very thin coating, so the so the so the coefficient of friction, the roughness is still maintained. It's a very, very thin coating, but it actually is a very versatile cup. It takes a vitamin E poly, it takes a highly crossing poly, it takes, a, it takes a, a, a dual mobility cup, it takes a ceramic liner, everything it takes. So this is a cheaper version or a one step down from the Zimmer Continuum Cup, which is actually the Tantalum Cup, which has been which has been around for a little while more. But this has the Metacell, the, possibly the smoothest inner surface that you'll find is with the Continuum Cup. And on the top of it, it has it, it, it has it has the tantalum, which is a particular metal. Wonderful, wonderful cup, but possibly one of the most expensive cups in the market. If you have a difficult situation, the continuum cup is your answer to the problem. How good does it do? NA star, as expected. ZCA is a cemented one. The um, the the, the trabecular metal again, 15A. The G7 has just been introduced to so 5A star. Continuum is is available in in our market. What about DPU? DPU has been making this. Uh, uh, the 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 the, uh, the pinnacle cup, which I think a lot of people are aware, it basically comes with three options: pro coat, geofix, and encryption. Pro coat was just centered titanium piece, smoothened out piece which you put on it, which they've been using for a very long time. Then the next step stepped on it was you do the pro coat and then you throw hydroxy apatite on it, and you produce a, still produce a lot of roughening and everything, produce a lot of porosity on it, but actually improves the whole thing much better. So it's a plasma flow. A frame application, but the king of everything from debut now is a grip. If you ask me today, gription, in my opinion, is as good as tantalum because the modulus of velocity is pretty much the same. The coefficient of friction is very, very high, high level of porosity. Plus, it gets you all sorts of wedges and combination as well. If you can afford it, gription, in, in my opinion, is a great answer, pretty much comparable to the tulip setup. So this has, has got the porocore uh, poro technology, plus you have these centered kind of particles on top of that. So this was titanium, this is also titanium. Again, it's a surface coating which they've actually produced on it. We produce a high degree of, of roughness, better bonding, whether macro or micro. We do we stand with our own depth. Pinnacle, is, uh, Pinnacle has always been a 15A star for a very, very long time. The Pinnacle Gription will be a so it will almost definitely be a 15A a star. So the, so the issue is, which coating works best? The answer is there are two types. One is a porous one and one is a plasma sprayed one. So the PTC, which is a porous titanium coating, is the one which works the best. Basically, it's a sintering process which they do. So the, so the particles actually or the roughness actually sticks to it much, much better and debonding does not happen. And every company now has an option like this. The Zimmer has the continuum uh, uh, with the tantalum, Striker has the tritanium, again, an excellent one, Smith and FUS stick tight, and Depew has a, uh, has a gription cup. All these cups are available in the market. High level of porosities in, in all of them. Almost a comparable coefficient of friction in, in, in all of them. Works out is a smooth, smooth kind of a cup. So this was the GR, GRI for long cup again, not to be recommended anymore because of the smoothness and all. That's the old uh, the old Zimmer, Zimmer cup, the Harris Galantic kind of fiber mesh of titanium, not to be recommended much. What about these surfaces? Clear winner, highly crossing poly up. I mean, miles ahead of everything else. Pro one data, no doubt, no doubt about it. Whether you use it with a ceramic or cera with, uh, uh, whether you use it with a metal or a ceramic, either way, it's actually a clear winner. If you use it on a ceramic, actually, there is it, it, this, this is a long-term study, and they look at it with an X-ray CD scan, no osteolysis seen. So definitely something to look forward. Remember, ceramic, which was always given a bad name because of the 
um, because of the fractures. Now they compared the delta with the forte group. The forte was the old one. The delta ceramic was the pink ceramic that people are using. Again, very, very low fracture rate. I'm not saying no fractures at all, but we're looking at a very low fract fracture rate. Scene. What about metal on poly, which is the conventional one, which is much, much more economical one which most of us will be using. The answer is on a highly cross-linked poly, much better result compared to, a, this, is, this is a simple uh, conventional polyethylene. So when you look, compare the results of conventional versus this, what you see is excellent outcomes with a cross-linked poly. So if you're going to use a metal, do try to use a highly cross-linked cross poly, which has been pretty much in every registry that, that you talk about. So... The, the the this this, this is the uh, the Australian and the New Zealand registry. If you're using X11, now that's a huge number. So about two lakh two lakh procedures lower lower revision rate at 16 years versus if you use a conventional polyethylene procedure. So huge numbers, and again the evidence is very very clear. Does ceramic click or not? The answer is yes. There is still a, a problem of ceramic click. It's much much lower. Remember the. The type of ceramic is changed, the technology is changed, we're learning why they click. So much, much better. America has taken to ceramic in a much bigger way. So the biggest or the most popular bearing surface used, the trending in US right now is, uh, is, uh, is actually ceramic on poly, no longer is it metal on poly. What about the dual mobility? The dual mobility is everybody's go-to child presently. So all the big manufacturers make a dual mobility most of you know everything about it. It's got a stem, it's got a small ball which works on a plastic. The plastic again can sit just on the shell or an intervening intervening thing if you look at my, my cursor. So the intervening thing is something which was added on by the Americans. The, the French never had the intervening thing. They went with the idea that you will only have the shell and the plastic will move inside the shell. The problem is when you start adding screws if you don't get a hold. Then you need to add this metal, metal inside. Remember, now the surfaces are very, very different. So you've got two dissimilar metals. You've got titanium in there, sorry, titanium in there and cobalt chrome in there because the smoothest surface that you can produce is cobalt chrome. So when the cobalt chrome is going to rub against titanium, there is going to be some backside wear. I can't tell you how much. Nobody can tell you, but there is backside wear. The other thing is look at the huge surface of the plastic. If this is going to move inside, it is going to produce some osteolysis. There is some wear being produced. So... Uh, what I'm trying to say is there is there are articular surfaces which can actually cause cause a problem. There is also a, there is there is a taper between this and this and there is a taper between this and this. All of them can actually give rise to problems, but it is something which is on the rise. The American Joint Replacement Surgery talks about seven percent of total being done for this condition. You would use it much, just as Dr. Sharma said especially if you have a spinal pelvic problems or you have a neuromuscular condition or you have a revision surgery or you have a fracture neck of you. Great indication for, for using this kind of a thing. Remember, we still don't know how it, how it will go in the long run. Big rush to use it. You don't know the result. Don't use it for the purpose of longevity. Use it for reducing the dislocation rate. That's what, much more important. And there isn't any data coming in. Now, the the, the, the thing to understand is, yes, you can have com a complication with it. It's called the IPD. In, 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 intraprosthetic dislocations are there, although much, much less common compared to others. Here's an example of an intraprosthetic complication in which if you have, if, sorry, if you have a look, you can't really see it, but the plastic has actually spun out of this. This is where the plastic is lying in there. That's where the plastic is lying. So it's dissociated from it. And when you go in there, it's actually lying right in the front. So it can dissociate. Not to say it's, it's not of this thing, but they're getting better. We're getting better at it. We're doing things like, you know, chamfering this kind of an area in there. We, we, we're putting a, a, a narrower trunnion, lesser chance of impingement, eccentric centers of rotation. There's a lot of things that are happening in the DBM market. And it's definitely something we can, we can think about. Large femoral heads. A, a brilliant idea, a definite go-to idea. But you should never go beyond 36. 32 would be an ideal kind of a stuff. Remember, there is more corrosion in the paper onion in, the, in this, between the stem and the head, which is there. So you just got to make sure that, you know, you, you balance out things things very well. And remember, going beyond 36 really doesn't help. 
What about the uncemented stems? So this is these are the stems which are available in the market: single taper, dual taper, and all which are available. So every company has actually got a single and a dual taper. But the most common ones that you're going to see are the single taper ones, which are getting very, very popular. So Smith and Nephew makes the anthology stem. It's a it's it's a it's a fairly good stem to use. Single taper. What they've done is actually got a hydroxyapatite coating. Coating out here to go with the with the, uh, with the titanium spray in there. This is the anthology and the and the synergy stem. Both of them are uh, are available in India, and the water printing is fairly good for both of them. The the stri striker has the accolade stem. They have a accolade one and accolade two. It's much more a slightly curved kind of a stem, and it actually is gives you a wonderful load. One thing you'll notice is they're taking out these lateral edges, and the reason for that is bone preservation. So pretty much all the big guys have actually got very very similar looking stem. Everybody's got the proximal porous coated stem. Everybody's narrowing the distal portion. This actually has a real advantage of lessening the chance of periprosthetic fracture. Then again, gives you all the options of ceramic head and and metallic head and all. And the, the engagement is happening in, in the metaphysis. That's the accolade one. The revision stem we'll talk about later. Look at the order printing. Exeter stands out as a great 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 stem. 15A star, accolade again, 15A, but not a 15A star, but a great stem. Zimmer has this called MM. So you can't actually, when you see them, you can't really see the, the difference between them. Again, a, 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 a titanium aluminum vanadium alloy, which is there, proximally coated, thin spine. What they've done is really narrowed down this distal part. They do not want to load the distal part. One problem which we had with Korai was the distal part was very, very thick. Second problem was the fully coated stem. So we well, at least I have moved away from from the fully coated stem, but this one works quite well. That's the ML taper. It might look as if it's engaging this leak. And look at the paper log. That was one of the best stems in my opinion. But they don't make it. Zimmer used uh, sorry, Biomet used to make it. Not available much anymore. The M ML taper has been around for a while and does very very well. The Wagner actually is not been around. CPT is the stem I was talking about. And cemented again. 15A star. This is just like an Exodus stem. Just like the the Chandler stem does very very well. The two trilog stem, wonderful, wonderful stem again. Sorry, we spoiled for choices in unsummated stems. They're wonderful stems. You cannot go wrong with these stems. And there are lots of options. And again, as I said, reduced load. Uh, the trilog is actually the smallest stem you're going to use. And this is something that you know really want to talk about. They put the gription coating on this, which is very, very good because it's a great coating to have. And they have a they have a single taper in there which works well. This is what I'm really hoping that we get very, very soon. This is the act. This is the latest latest thing with the made. Surprisingly, they come out with the collar. None of the other stems have a collar. They have a collar. I'm not very sure the significance of this. It should be coming to India within, within the next year or something. And the technology that they use is the Geofix. Remember, we had Gibson in there, and on this we have the Geofix, which has the the, the, the titanium, titanium bearings along with the hydroxyapatite coated. Look at this, which has always been a runner and a winner. Is the Kora is always in very very good. The SROM was always used in revision. So, you know, it's never going to be brilliant. The dialogue is the one which we're really hoping one day will be one of the, one of the winners of the thing. So, um, th these are the different kind of sort of uh, unsummated stems that are available. Surprisingly, when you look at the cross, cross this is the article that I was talking about. So, the, the, they've classified the stems. There's very little evidence which you actually come across when you see all of them. So, the small stems like the meat, the meta stem and the meo stem, very poor evidence, very high chance of failure. The Proxima kind of thing, very little. The shortened paper stem, this is the trilog which I was talking about. Again, maybe there will be. This is what you're going to go to all the time, the single wedge or the double wedge. But there is a paper lock, trilog, accolade or the synergy and the summit kind of a stem. And that's, these, these are more the sort of revision kind of stuff, but obviously you can use them in a, in, in, in a, in a, in a primary kind of uh, uh, setting as well. The anatomical stems are pretty much now not being used. So this is your go-to stem, the type 2 and the type 3, single wedge or the double wedge. To the more complex one, you've got the tapered like the Wagner and the solution stems fall into the five category. The modular ones like the, the SROM and the, um, the, uh, the, the, the striker system are the ones that are going to the next. So HA quoted, is it really in, is it out? The answer is nobody has actually shown much of a improvement in survival if you put an HA or you don't put it. So in principle, you don't really need an HA. Many stems in or out, the answer is most likely in. Most likely we will be using more many stems 
mainly because you don't want to load the meta uh, uh, mainly because you want to avoid the revision problem which are there in the slightly longer steps so i think they will be in robotics in or out the, an- the answer is not shown to make any huge difference in the outcomes yes they do improve just like the knee yes they do improve your the positioning of the implant but not seen to make a huge difference who, 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 what is america and europe using now america has gone out with ceramic in a big way the member they got bigger bigger hips and also they using 36 things for our kind of a thing a 32 is good enough europe is still using metallic and 32 mm heads are the most commonly used again robotic surgery yes it is there not so not so common so cemented implants still holding steady don't give up on them different options available try to use these options but you need to look over the roughened the most roughened astabulum that you can find with the best coating ceramic on poly is the go to option today for the young person don't go beyond 32 mm go for the paper paper stem look out for the robotic one presently not the winner today thank you so much fantastic stuff gurinder as always i'll invite any suggestions comments and questions uh sir can i please samir thank you okay uh so my question it will be a simple one uh, dr bedi if uh, there was a guy of 35 year old uh, patient uh, and you plan a primary in him for hip arthritis and of course i believe you would choose an uncemented so my question would be why would you choose uncemented in this case okay so the um, so the, the, there is zero doubt in my mind i'm going to use an uncemented uncemented i'm going to use is is a ceramic on poly so um, can i some can i just extend the question a little bit please, sir, yeah, uh, please. so for a, uh, for a for a 20 22 year old which is not that uncommon in our settings i'm going to use a ceramic on ceramic from from the both 35 plus kind of a category it's a ceramic on a highly crossing poly the reason the reason why i i do it i think the data which is coming from ceramic on poly is actually wonderful whether you, whether you look especially the ngr data and the australian orthoplasty registry data and now the american data which has come out ceramic on poly is my go to based completely on on the on the data availability plus my my um my option of putting a 32 mm head it i may or may not be able to do a cemented because i will always be tempted to put Uh, a, 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 a 28 in a cemented and open because my my cup is going to be a 46 or a 47 so because i can use a slightly bigger head because i have the flexibility of actually um, changing my implants my liner and all much more i'm going to use a uncemented okay uh, sir then my question uh, the same question uh, similar question to dr haven sir let's imagine you're a, a cemented guy you know who prefers cement you know a cemented implant so why would you choose if ever you choose a cemented implant in a young patient imagining that you you are a proponent of cemented implants which are there world over yeah. now the guys who are doing cemented uh, stems they vouch for, for the longevity but then you have to do a very very good cementation you don't have to do digital fill up you don't have have to cut corners then if you want to do a cemented goods uh, sort of a stem you have to be absolutely by the rule book and trust me you will get a very very good longevity the other thing which you asked gurinder regarding choosing the sort of for a young patient we are also wanting to probably invest into the revision surgeries in young patients so revising a probably you might not need to revise a stem which has really got well fixed or uncemented stem so probably the data is going towards that that in young patients if you are doing a good cement a cementless stem probably you will not need to look that side again okay all right thank you so thanks gurinder excellent talk uh, few questions if i am allowed please please, please, please sir please so uh, can you tell us about the odep rating is it um, available uh, through the odep site or how do you get it yes so it, it's see if if you type in odep uh, odep rating you go to the site the site tells you how do you how do you actually find it out they do it for the hip implants the knee implants i think in the shoulder as well if i'm not mistaken so it's <laughs> they have a chart they tell you what each and every implant 
the number of implants is in hundreds i think that's a good uh, new information that we have uh, gained out of your talk and people should visit that website it will really give you an objective idea on the rating of the particular implant well, second thing was uh, you mentioned a current concept article uh, which uh, categorizes the stem i couldn't get that which one was it um uh, let it i'm just going to uh, i'm just going to take a photograph and send it to you is that okay sorry i'm uh, So I it should be for the benefit of the <laughs> delegates because I, I think it's a great article and people should go through that article. I'll, I'll just post it on the chat. Yeah, we we'll post it on the chat. And the third uh, clinical question, which is uh, regarding the holes in an uncemented cup. So it's in in a simple primary where you have a three hole cup. Would you prefer filling up all the holes? Mm, so the uh, the answer is, I actually put up two screws in every stem that I do. The, Uh, if the question put to me is can uh, okay unless your cup has something which can actually block off like the g7 cup now has screws which you can actually block block it yeah. off so that the osteolysis doesn't go my problem is i have had uh, you know you need to burn your hands once or twice only before the cup which you thought was solid kind of a stuff and then you you know and the patient comes comes back and it's slightly tilted off kind of a stuff and in 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 my sort of in, in a private practice i mean that's a disaster the patient looks at you as if you're the worst fool in the market so you know i've actually taken a safety path if the question to to me is if i can block the holes and if i get a solid one do i have a justification for putting a screw the answer is no but there is no doubt if you do a texa with screws around the strongest bone that you're going to see is around the screws so two screws uh, is preferable and need not block the third Thanks for the great talk. Any any more comments, please? Sir, sir one more uh, if uh, if there's a time. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, sir, is there an issue ever if there is a type A canal and the surgeon? Samir, we lost you. Your connection is unstable, Samir. Is ready with the uncemented implant. That's it, and that's it. or is there ever issue that you might break the femur while reaming in a in a, a type a canal um samir can i ask a question again so your question is a type a canal when you go in and you can't introduce the the uh, the stem is that what you saying yes sir yes in type a is there any uh, ever an issue in reaming and then uh, uh, or you get all type of stems and then you are already prepared for it so the i think uh, haven would uh, sort of tell you more about it but i uh, there is a problem problems have occurred depends on which company you are actually de- dealing with so if you are especially the ddh kind of a implant which is there you need to keep something like a like an esrom or something and you but you need to do all your pre op planning so the esrom will actually get you through almost the thinnest canal that you can find if not that the cemented will always the cemented ddh is the thinnest stem that i've actually come across ever thinner than the esrom so i have had problems but it's been pre operatively planned and everything so not got stuck out but i think haven would like to talk about this right no i agree with gurinder samir in case you are anticipating that your canal is going to be super tight be ready with the petite uh, uh, stem or you at least must have the reamers free hand reamers by which you will sort of first do the straight reaming and then only you will start using the rasp because if you straight away go into the rasp the tips are very very uh, broad they will just blast the femur so if you have done your uh, with your simple earlier days k nail or the interlock nailing flexible reamers to a extent and after that then you do your uh, rasp that, that is the only way whenever i am in doubt i always use a plate holding big femoral clamp on the upper femur when i am doing this procedure release it only after i put the uncemented stem so it's simple trick it doesn't come in your way it in fact help you to do the reduction and the dislocation when you are doing trialing so a big clamp bone uh, sorry plate holder is to be put in the upper femur Thank you, sir. That's a very, very useful trick. Yes, thank you. Uh, can I ask you a question, Dr. Gurinder? Anjit, please. please. Well, excellent talk as as usual. My question is very basic. Uh, so, 
sometimes it happens that you have done uh, extrablar reaming as per plan and uh, you did a under reaming by 1 or 2 mm and then trying to put the cup but cup is turns out to be not that strong the classical teaching is that you when you move the cup the whole pelvis should move it doesn't happen that time you put two or screw and then you get a uh, get out of it is that the correct method or you think that we should go to higher one so higher the answer, so the answer is cheap you know your call at that stage is a very tricky call mm -hmm. i you know the, the when you're giving a lecture the answer to this question is you must get your primary stability in a primary replacement but i can tell you as just as you have done it and i have also done it i've had things in which i thought look i've really knocked it in well and you know i move it around and everything looks very good just when i'm leaving you know somebody's hand comes and the cup is suddenly swimming if you think your rims are all inside go for the next one if you think your rims are already so always measure the head which you cut if you cut a head and it reads about 46 go with the idea that i'll get away till about a 50 if you thinking look i'm already putting a 50 now from 46 i'm going to a, do a 52 cup then i'm just going to go with that 50 and i'm going to put screws that's what i'm going to do this is my frank answer i know i should not be saying it on a public forum that's what i would do but if i have only dream to you know like 47 tak hi gaya hu my my cup is well seated in there i've looked at the amount of bone which i've taken out which is very little i say i'm going to dream more and actually go for a bigger size majority of the times i have walked out with more screws rather than uh, dream higher that's a frank admission dr sharad can i add yeah please this problem occurs when you are doing a uncemented uh, astablum system in a osteoporotic bone that whatever little cartilage and subchondral hard bone you remove after that it just melts so yes. sometimes don't get committed to the large heads most of the times we overream because we want to fit in the 32 36 so if you your femur the head was small restrict yourself don't start reaming to adjust a large head that you want to finally put it and sometimes if the bone was soft when you were reaming please don't do trialing because when you are trialing and you ram it totally in sometimes it just takes away the last rim fit and then your cup starts to get loose and no. is that is that what you do what do you, what do you do only queries will that affect the longevity of the cup what do you if think if it is loose then screws don't give longevity sir you will surely have a loosening down the time answering gurinder i if the patient is young the bone is good stock i do a trialing of the establum i usually always have the odd and even reamers initially i use them in sequence but as i am approaching the final cup size i start to now slow down and like once i cross the 48 49 then i slow down then i am not doing it too fast i do a trialing always get my version check it with the guide then only open the cup so um, sure that odd even thing is a very good idea earlier we were only doing multi two now we i think odd even is, is is a must you must have your odd even you must tell the company man to get the full establer set they do cheating they send odds to one surgical ot even to the other ot they make a fool of us please don't do that sir one mm higher it mean that that way they may solve the problem one mm higher you can go it is very soft you don't need to go one higher the remain sir no no uh, the cup the cup size is it Yes, sir. You can go one, one. Yeah, yeah, one. I mean, I mean, can I add something to it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, uh, uh, only thing I disagree with uh, Gurinder is that what I do in such situation, we keep the trial next size and see it should be at least rotationally stable. If it is rotationally absolutely free, screws will not work. That's my personal opinion. Right. So suppose the rotation it it rotates very freely in the acetabulum. then think of putting higher size and if you are able to get at least some rotation stability go you can get away with the screws and i want to add something for samir also samir asked that can you shatter the bone when you're doing an uncemented stem with a narrow canal so i mean i think with each each company has recommendation of minimum reaming of the canal before you start uh, broaching 
like i tend to use coral stem it says you at least distal reaming you do by 8 and for certain sizes distal reaming you do by 10 now if you have not reamed and started broaching directly and if you get engagement in the distal femur first there are chances rather than getting in metaphyses there are chances the patient might come back to you with thigh pain so we are not keen to have primary engagement in the distal femur so we are very cautious when you are broaching if it starts engaging the distal femur first or i mean the medullary area first you take a reamer reamer come with every set of uh, even um, uh, uncemented uh, stems you remake one and then you again start broaching that's the answer so that way you avoid both the things you avoid shattering and you avoid distal thigh pain also sir in your answer i have also got the reason of thigh pain uh, one of the reasons is this there many patients who complain of thigh pain yeah one of them one of them so you don't want engagement first in the metaphyses and then in metaphyses uh, sir I one small uh, yeah. so sorry yeah please go ahead Right. Okay. Yes. So one small. Uh, so one reason. One reason, Doctor uh, Bedi uh, said he would use unsummited in a young patient would be uh, for using a larger head. Now, so there are few companies who have come with the uh, uh, 32 size uh, head in cement. I'm talking of cemented cups uh, for cemented implants. Uh, 32, even in smaller cups, even up to 48. So. Uh, i mean is there an issue or now that we to use a bigger head we use uncemented is there uh, any issue still so i think no 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 so i think uncemented the literature is coming out that initial 10 or 15 years it it behaves better than cemented one number one number two as hamin pointed out you should be doing cemented regularly to get the kind of results you are looking for 25 years survival 30 years survival you should be doing it regularly you should day in and day out if you are an occasional cement if you use occasional indoor type c you do cemented stem then it's better because you are tuned to do uncemented better and technically it is less challenging if you do a cemented it is technically more challenging and more effort is required to get those longevity in cemented one so that's the reason at least in my practice that we do uncemented day in and day out and we can do it very nicely so we tend to incline more towards yes if you have been doing cemented day in and day out Go ahead and do cemented one. Nobody stops you. I mean, Thank you, sir. Doctor Ranawat was asked regarding doing a cemented or an uncemented, and it was answered that if he is doing it, the patient cemented will also do well. <laughs> yes. So it is yes. just a matter of the sort of cementation. I'm yes. so I'm not complaining, but majority of us, when we were in our training, the cementations, the entire handling of the cement used to be. जल्दी से बस डाल दो राइट वॉट वॉज द सीमेंट वॉज इट लो विस्कॉसिटी मिड और हाई वी डेंट नो राइट यस एंड एंड वरी ऑफ इट गेटिंग इट वरी ऑफ गेटिंग इट हार्ड एंड एंड देन यस ट्रू राइट थैंक यू सो मच I think it's clear now. My internet connection is quite okay. Yeah, so, Since we're working well. So, Dr. Rinder has put up for everybody. the article which dr lalit many was uh, referring to it is giving a extreme good detail on the cementless femoral fixation right gurinder yes so uh, we have no more comments or questions so i will invite back uh, professor anil arora please sir you can share your screen yeah, sure I'm sorry for all this whatever happened I'll start from uh, the slide where I you got stuck. Isolated tabular exchange. That is where you got stuck, sir. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right, please. Is it? Is it? Is it okay? Yes, sir. We, we can start from here, well, right? Yeah. So I. So I mean, please let me know if I stop the slides get stuck, etc. Because I just restarted the internet. Sure, so isolated liner exchange can be done for well fixed well positioned undamaged non infected stable shell we still have intact locking mechanism after removal of liner and you should be sure that the kind of components you are going to use have good track record in case there is a low demand patient as a damaged locking mechanism one can safely use a cemented liner one example a lady done about 15 years back her came reported with lysis 
and one can always one can see that uh, the head has moved up there is lysis there is wearing out of the inner bearing and in this case we grafted the tocanter fixed it and changed the inner bearing line of exchange was done and she behaved very well now this isolated line of exchange is a controversial modality many surgeon prefer cup revision to isolated line of exchange because of these very reasons it remains the surgeon's choice which way he tilts now when will primary cementless hemispheres or shells will fail in cases of severe bone loss where you can't get 50% contact with host bone or if there is significant superior bone deficiency not supporting the cup not supporting the cementless shell now in such situation highly porous acidural components come to your rescue which can work even with 40% viable stable bony bed and they have higher porosity higher coefficient of friction so good initial stability and all these properties have been spoken about by my previous speakers and the best part is that you can put additional screws through these cups with special drill bit in in an area where the bone is strong in revision scenario that's very useful they can you can have highly porous acidic components made of porous metal itself like tantalum or just a coating what gurinder told the most commonly used is tantalum the so called trabecular matter which has great physical properties more similar to bone than any other prosthetic load bearing metal you get all sort of wedges all sort of augments shims you get buttresses resectors everything along with cups where you can use in different scenario and they can be used in place of bone graft this is buttress augments and there is no more need of the so called flying buttress graft or figure of seven graft etc and the so called tmrs or tubular metal acetabular reconstruction system can take care of all sort of paparoski grades or deficiencies or acetabular problems just sharing an example a young lady with metal or metal painful the cup was quite vertical this was revised cup removed and we used a highly porous cup the tantalum shell along with the with the fully porous coated stem and she did well in follow up another patient left side was symptomatic after 19 years the cup was loose this was type 3 apoplexy and we used an augment in this case on the supralateral side and this patient also did well in follow up this patient done elsewhere two years back for fracture dislocation hip patient came to me for revision and ct scan done basic work up done and we could use even shim and it gave us good stability to the rim this is the post op x ray we could bring down the center of rotation of hip put the cup in native place this was jan 18 two months follow up patient did well and this was four months follow up and this was six months follow up osteotomy united patient still doing well and we could restore biomechanics of hip nicely this patient came to me for re revision this was revision done elsewhere two years back the fully porous long coated stem was used the cup was loose after two years this patient was for re revision patient was quite bulky heavy lady but stem was very well fixed so we went prepared to change stem even if required but stem we found was very well fixed and we could do well with augments and tantalum shell with good fixation and this lady also is doing well in follow up so trabecular metal augments at 15 years follow up if you see results are very good and excellent and very exciting now if you do not want to use these augments and supports in a case with the acetabulum is worn out oblong shape one can ream it to a spherical shape and use a so called jumbo cup this is the classical definition of jumbo cup this is considered as a work horse of revision total hip arthroplasty just one sharing one example with you and in this case for revision cement and cement uh, stem was used and a jumbo cup was used another patient infected bipolar with acetabular bone loss CT scan there was no pelvic discontinuity and the columns were largely available this was done in two stages stage 1 and in stage 2 the acetabulum was there were there were margins visible there was floor visible and columns were 
supported we used a enhanced self coating acetabular lumbo cup and this patient again did well this two years follow up and this is, the patient is doing very well so what does jumbo cup offer it permits you weight bearing over a large area of the pelvis because of good contact over a large surface area the need for bone grafting is obviated but then at the same time it does not restore acetabular bone stock which is quite important for younger patients you can even sometime remove more bone while you are reaming they can have impingement of ileus vas because of bigger size and the chances of dislocation are slightly higher with these cups when you use a conventional size femoral head this is contraindicated where you cannot get good primary fit of the jumbo cup but it's a great modality even in cases where you have pelvic discontinuity if you use them with modular porous metal acetabular augments this is the, the classical landmark study by neil where they have dis, they have shown the good healing of chronic pelvic discontinuity with distraction technique with jumbo cup and metal augments still one of the best modalities to treat chronic pelvic discontinuity is how we in the results 80 patients survival rate 91% at 16 years in jumbo cup another study 20 years results survival she was 88% so jumbo cups if done with proper indications have great survival rate that's the recommendation for jumbo cup combination preferably use enhanced porous coating if available use highly cross linked polyliner and a large or a dual mobility femoral head cemented cups in revision scenario have not fared well they are poor choice in isolation as there is poor bony bed they are they can have early loosening and failure because the bed is very poor is better to use them with impaction bone grafting which is an excellent technique a well established technique to restore acetabular bone stock especially in younger patients now this technique has excellent long term results especially from these two centers around the world and this technique can be used for all grades of acetabular bone loss one can use supplemental wedges meshes structural allografts to make the the segmental defect a contained defect and one can use posterior column plates for additional stability survival rates are very good surgical technique is demanding and requires appropriate training before you do it that's why it's not very popular world over because it requires great training cement in cement revision just for the sake of completion in a recently done acetabulum and there is some malposition or instability and you expect the bone cement interface to be intact and good cement mantle but i don't think anyone of us is doing it dual mobility cups lot has been discussed just a reminder dislocation rate in revision total hip arthroplasty is almost three times higher than primary total hip arthroplasty it is quite high and they are an excellent option wherever there is high risk of dislocation as gurinder pointed out in these indications in revision scenario even in severe acetabular defects just sharing one case this patient has already undergone four surgeries in last 10 years and this was an infected total hip arthroplasty the surgeon had removed the implants the surgeon had later on removed the spacer this patient came to me after 10 years one can see the cancellized bone on the femoral side patient now wanted a stable mobile and painless hip we went ahead and used a dual mobility cup along with the cement itself and the patient did well so the 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 use of dual mobility cups in revision total hip arthroplasty has been considered as an efficient strategy to reduce this location article in journal of arthroplasty and there are few surgeons who are big fan and they tend to use dual mobility mo, dual mobility cups in almost all revisions with severe bone loss constrained acetabular liners they are one of the options but with the advent of dual mobility cups they have fallen out of place because there are a lot of complications in mid term follow up so they are not a preferred unless the patient is repeated dislocator the article says constrained liners have more complications as compared to dual mobility cups and large heads however it remains a useful salvage procedure 
rings and cages a lot has been talked about it roof reinforcement rings not most commonly used nowadays they are used to protect the bone graft placed at the roof of the acetabulum empty protrusio cages are to be used when one cannot get in large bowl defects when one cannot get stable fixation or biological fixation of porous implants the only problem is these cages do not provide biological surface they do not have outer osteo integrative surface and you need to put bone to restock the uh, the bone stock so one has to use them with grafts these cages are meant for difficult cases like pelvic discontinuity or combined segmental and cavitatory defects large defects besides other these indications just one example this was similar case what dr sharma showed two years back this patient suffered an acetabular fracture which fixed with plating of the anterior column patient was walking on it she was 70 year old female came to us for stable painless mobile hip we thought it is strong fibrous union along with anteriorly stable column and we thought of doing massive grafting in the primary cup with screws we put screws but our thought was not correct we did not add a posterior plate we thought it's quite unstable construct but it was not within 6 months everything fell apart patient came back and we had to revise it and this time we were wiser we used a cage on the acetabular side with copious grafting and it succeeded the patient did well in follow up so these cages can be used in difficult scenarios now these anti protrusive cages they support the acetabular cup on outer side and allow allograft incorporation on the inner side once you have put bone grafts but they have their own inherent problems as they are load sharing devices there are high chances of complication in mid term follow up and if it is so then one can combine these cups these cages with cups the so called cup cage construct one can add a cup on the outer side and this is a win win situation where both the implants came you combine a cage with a cup now once they are unitized the cage gets an osteo integrative outer surface at the same time the cup gets initial and initial enhanced stability for osteo integration one example again frank pelvic discontinuity basic studies done and the cup cage combination was used in this case along with eto and a titanium stem was used a model stem was used and the patient did well in 8 months follow up cup cage reconstruction does better than conventional cages in mid term it is mentioned in this study seven year survivorship was just double when you add a cup to the cage if it is used as a cup cage combination but if you use only cage the survival was around 50% which jumped to around 87% when a cup was used along with the cage custom pry flange prosthesis one of the options in severe bone loss they have rigid flanges with osteo integrative outer surface the only problem is limitation of cost and time required to custom make these kind of custom pry flange processes requires is technically demanding otherwise they are great they are great gadgetries a follow up 20 year experience general of arthroplasty as late as may 2021 and they have done very very well let's go on to the femoral side goals of femoral revision again these are the five main goals achieving long term implantation and fixation preserve or restoration of femoral bone stock to restore biomechanics reduce complications and improve quality of life of the patient these are the goals just a small reminder of paparoski's classification these main four types of uh, bone loss and four types of femora can we use primary cementless femoral stems in revision scenario yes one can do if there is largely intact metaphysis where you can get purchase in metaphysy and this is a paper in may 2021 which has shown good results in the improper indications or else one can use proximal femoral stems like asrom with largely intact proximal metaphysis and the best part with asrom is the osteo integration takes place in the proximal part in the metaphysis conserving the diaphysis bone for a future revision in a young patient you can have n number of combinations with this one example young male painful infected 
the SR done in two stages, stage one and stage two, and SR was used. And this patient is doing well more than 10 years now. Now, another implant, extensively porous coated cylindrical stems for revision situation, which can be used in type 2 and type 3 paparoscopy. They have mainly direct physical fixation. They are workhorse of revision surgeon. They work on cell workhorse. Results are excellent in type 2 and type 3A, even in type 3A in canals less than 19 millimeter. They have excellent survivorship with long-term follow-up. Just one example, a 78-year-old male with loose stem. The cup was reasonably stable, and there was revision done on the femoral side, and the patient was doing well. Patient is doing well still now. Another patient with degenerative arthritis of hip, following trauma with implant in place. Primary was done with using an SOM, but the stem was quite undersized. Within three years, the patient, it was painful. It became loose and we had to revise, revise the femoral side. The stem was used and extensively porous coated stem was used with diaphyseal fixation. And this patient again did well in follow-up. So extensively porous coated cylindrical stems have done well, but they have their own shortcomings because they have diaphyseal fixation they have distal fixation, they can have significant stress shielding and proximal bone resorption. For undersized stem, they can, there can be stem fracture. And with monoblock variety, there is slightly higher chance of dislocation. These patients in whom we use these kind of stems can have thigh pain because of various reasons, but this thigh pain is never severe enough to have an indication for revision. Just one example to show you, how much lysis can take in the proximal part in distal fixing stem? Somebody asked where should be the fixation? Primary metaphysial, but in the revision scenario, you are forced to have distal fixation. Now, landmark paper of Paparoski, where they have suggested, they have recommended the use of modular tapered stem or impaction bone grafting in type 3B defects where there is less than 4 centimeters of isthmus. And in type 3B defects with canals greater than 19 millimeter, large capacious canals, and in type 4 defects. So the long-term results of the so-called extensively porous coated femoral stems have been great, undoubtedly, no doubt about it. Sharing one more case, came for revision. It was painful, loose stem on the femoral side. This was done surgery five years back elsewhere. I used a fully porous coated solution stem in this case. I was happy, patient was happy, but six months down the line, patient came back with pain and instability. The stem had sink down. One can see in the comparative x-rays, the stem has sink down. There was no osteoindegration. integration. Another x-ray to show, this was the shoulder, it has sink down. And I removed the stem in this case, there was no osteointegration. integration. There was thick membrane all around the stem. And in this case, I use a distal locking stem. This was the post-op X-ray. Fixation was good. We could restore the biomechanics. And this was the two-year follow-ups. How about tapered fluted stems? Now, tapered fluted stems have been specifically indicated for type 3B femora, where you have less than four centimeter of isthmus. But however, they can be used in type 2 or type 3 paparoski, and even in type 4 in an old patient above 65 years of age, they can be modular or non-modular variety. These stems have an advantage because they can pro they provide better stability, and the modular variety will give you better biomechanics by restoration of length, offset, and version. These stems are known to restore proximal femoral bone stock as compared to fully porous coated cylindrical stems where you can have loss of proximal bone stock and there are less chances of intraoperative fracture when you use these stems because you don't have to hammer them hard as you do for extensively porous coated cylindrical stems. With modular tapered coated stems, there are less chances of dislocation when you compare them with monoblock tapered stems in the recent situation. And these modular tapered conical division stems have fared very well in medium term results. 
These stems also can have frequent asymptomatic subsidence, which really requires revision. And under and this is one example. Patient came for revision. This was an infected implant. I, I came to me for stage two, and we used a tapered model stem with the with the module with the junction within the diaphysis with a dual mobility cup because this patient initially had a subtrochanteric fracture. Now, even with tapered fluted stems, if the size is small, if it is undersized stem, they can have aseptic loosening. And if it is bulky implant or a larger, thick diameter stem, there can be some stress shielding in few cases. One another problem with modular stems is breakage at the modular junction. And it can happen in narrow femoral canals where we have used small stem diameter in an obese patient, high BMA patient. So this paper suggests, this landmark paper suggests that in patients who have narrow canal, we are using less diameter stem. In an obese patient, it's better to use a non-modular stem rather than a modular stem. What can a surgeon do to reduce the risk of junctional breakage is this, rather than keeping this modular junction unsupported, one can modify and can use a thicker stem with a larger proximal body and keep this modular junction within the diaphysis supported. Now, when you compare modular tapered versus modular cylindrical stems, various studies, modular tapered have fared very well. So they are preferred. How about cemented stems for several reasons? The, the role of cemented stems, they have fared poorly if you use them only in isolation of cemented stems because there is sclerotic and dostial surface. However, they have role in the very narrow indications which are mentioned here. But cement and cement revision, it is quite an attractive option for aseptic revision in a well-fit cement metal. It's a quick procedure with least morbidity. Just one example, in a revision situation with a, with a jumbo cup, the cement and cement revision work done. Study published in March 2019 from Exeter, and it says that the Kaplan mass survivor analysis at 10 years, it revealed 100% survival for aseptic stem loosening when semen and semen uh, revision stem was used. How about impaction grafting with polished cemented stems? Great technique. It allows reconstitution of bone stock, especially in younger patients. Quite a technically challenging procedure, but you need an intact proximal cortical shell. It has its own share of complication. The results are largely technique dependent and will need to be trained well to perform this. Hello graft prosthetic composite used in type four in younger patient where you want to restore bone stock. You need a bone bank for this. Again, it has its own share of complications. Mega prosthesis is meant for older patients in type 4 femora, stove pipe. Just showing one example. In stay after doing cleaning and this is stage two, there was not much bone left and a proximal femoral replacement was used. Now, how do I choose an implant? I have a long list. I tend to tick this list. I, whatever best conditions one can meet, one should meet in revision scenario on acetabular as well as on the femoral side. Thank you very much. Dr. Loda, exhaustive and a fabulous. You cover practically everything. Oh. Very nice to hear you. Quite. So I have uh, two points and questions to ask. Yes. Are you using 3D printing to plan your surgeries of revision? Not yet, Harun. Would you like to, sir? Especially for the establishment side. Oh, definitely. Undoubtedly. Okay. I would invite others also if they have any experience of 3D printing. The second question for you on the femur side. So you showed that move the junction when you are wanting from the uh, metaphysial epiphyseal side to more towards the metaphysial diaphyseal side where you have a sort of stronger bone. Have you used 
neutralizing plates with uh, maybe a, a sort of a wire tension loop or unicortical screws to augment the uh, stem inside. So no, I mean I haven't used that, but then I have definitely followed this principle. Whenever I have to, whenever I have to use this modular stems, there is always an option. Stem size, the stem size as well as the proximal body size. So one can use a slightly thicker stem and sink it inside, and then put the modular body inside. Right. So I have not used the gadgetry you are talking of mm -hmm. to use a plate along with the. Because a locking plate with unicortical screws and a high tension cable where the stem would be in the distal part can actually really help you gain stability fast in cases you think there will be a deficiency. And you can put the grafts in the inside. You are talking about diaphyseal stability? Correct, correct, correct. Metaphyseal, diaphyseal areas, you can supplement it with an outside plate also, sir. Yeah, I think one is one is supposed to get good primary stability in diaphysis with the stent. Uh, Gurinder right. had shown the ODEP rating of Esron to be 10A only. You were strongly recommending uh, the Esron for use in specific cases. I think the rating which Gurinder showed of ODEP rating was 10A. Whereas the other uh, uncemented systems are having 13 or 15 A plus. So, uh, Harbin, it has a very specific narrow indication zone where you where you use uh, a strobe stem. Correct. In the visual scenario, suppose metaphysis is still available, but not good enough to give you primary stem. Now, you would not like to you know uh, sacrifice that metaphysial bone and get a diaphyseal fixation. Right, so we will prefer a Asrom stem. However, one can use a modular tapered fluted stem in the same scenario. Correct. Get a good diaphyseal fixation, and at the same time, you can get a creation of bone in the proximal metaphysis. It is surgeon's choice between the two. Right, sir. Plus, plus with these sort of sleeves, you have the freedom to also play around with a little bit of the antiversion. It is true with the modular stems also when you are using a modular tapered cooked stem. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, do we have any more questions for Professor Anil Arora? This is one question in the chat. Yes, sir. Which company provides locking stems? This is by Dr. Sunil Devangam from Chhattisgarh. See, uh, I use mainly DEPU material, and in DEPU, reef stem is available, which is locking. So if I can add on that question of 3D printing, uh, I have been uh, using and helping colleagues on uh, 3D printing for planning, specifically on acetabular side, as rightly Harvin said. Uh, it helps in two ways, you know, uh, you have um, the real time model in your hand pre-surgical and uh, the best part is you can uh, try out your wedges, your cages, your cup size, your cup position, and you can really have a real-time estimate of plan A, B, and C, and also share the same with the patient. So that way, your uh, costing also becomes a bit more objective than, uh, you know, totally open. And the second thing, which is of real help, is uh, intraoperatively positioning the cup in the center where you require. So if you have a 3D printing uh, modality available, you can uh, develop certain guiding jigs, which uh, in a large defect like a pelvic discontinuity, when you want to restore the center of rotation, can actually give you how deep and uh, uh, where the cup should be. So those are two great indications. And if anyone uh, anytime has any uh, help he needs on 3D printing, I'm always there, I can help you out. Great. And how many days it takes to give you uh, to give us back uh, the 3D printed model? Mm, three days. Three days. And you need a CT scan. CT scan. You can email the CT scan. It comes on the Google drives. So we just print it on that. The Great. CT Thank has you. to be one mm cut. 
and the usual cost increase is something between 10 and 20000 rupees for the 3d model am i correct cost is always an issue if you go for the if you go commercially uh, for a pelvis the cost would be somewhere between 15 and 20000 i think okay uh, but we 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 have our own printer and we uh, just have the material cost which comes to us so we do it anything between 2000 and 3000 that means it is at your institution yeah okay in the revision surgeries dr arora you also mentioned allografts where are you sourcing your allografts from i'm getting freeze dry from tata memorial okay because freeze dry won't have much strength so you basically are using it for the packing filler that's right like a filler yeah so so there is some new development as far as bone banking is concerned in uh, delhi and cr now there is a registration process available so those of you who are actually working so much on uh, revisions should aim at getting at uh, bone bank uh, in your institute because now the regulation has been laid down and there's a very simple uh, registration process uh, which you guys can easily achieve and what is the type of bone bank uh, bone that we will be procuring or keeping that that will all depend upon you okay oh. more more often than not it is always a uh, uh, deep freeze deep freeze so most of the bone banks are now deep freeze we will take the uh, sort of leads from you yeah sure if we don't have any more questions or comments from the ec members or the faculty or any uh, more questions from delegates i'll pass it back to lalit thank you so much for giving us this opportunity it has been a wonderful session thanks avin uh, thanks for conducting it and uh, you finished it dot at 8:35 and uh, probably we're going to see an upset in french open today uh, uh, the cc cc pass is doing great there yeah cc pass is doing great <laughs> that is where dalit was disappearing now we know <laughs> i was everywhere so i checked on the odep website also there is an error going on on the odep website and uh, i have fished out the jbjs article so if any of you want it i will uh, whatsapp you the article the full text so great uh, inputs and uh, lots of knowledge i hope uh, the delegates have uh, uh, gained a lot and uh, so any last comments from uh, the faculty dr pradeep sharma dr gurinder dr anil arora anything on evolution of a surgeon on settling down or on an implant or you never settle down you keep changing as the market changes no lalit the world is changing one needs to keep on changing i think with times <laughs> that's what my take is right dr i have been yeah i tend to use similar implant see just to share i've been using coral almost 15 years now almost same stem every time same stem because you know you get used to it unless there is revision case or some other uh, indication to use something else so i would suggest you get used to at least one set of primary implants then you can try out whatever you want to try out but you see i now working in corporate world it is practically non forgiving you need to be highly trained in one set of primary implants and then you can add on with passage of time that's my opinion in revision scenario again you need to be going for proper training because revision is really really difficult scenario you have sometimes take major decision on table you need to have full armamentarium prepared a day prior you should be prepared and unless you have assisted 50 100 uh, revision surgeries you just can't even properly expose so you are you are worried exposing sciatic nerve etc etc so that's my opinion here so that that that's a very uh, valid point you know uh, the volume surgeon you are a volume surgeon and uh, most of the general orthopedic surgeons would be around 50 or maybe less than 50 a year so that does a ma does make a difference and uh, probably each uh, each instrumentation and implant also has its own learning curve you learn and understand the implant as you grow with it so bedi is around anything haven you want to add no i think compared to knee arthroplasty hip arthroplasty is the margin of error is very less so i i feel that all the budding younger orthopedic surgeons 
not just for revision like professor aroda is saying even for primary total hip they should not take it lightly they should definitely go and do some cadaveric workshops saw bone models and work for some time with surgeons so as to have a good feel of how you should do the establum how you should do the femoral stem so thanks for those uh, words of wisdom and uh, thanks a lot for a wonderful evening uh, the next program of delhi orthopedic association is going to be pathological fractures so moving uh, from one topic to another and uh, good night and uh, have a nice uh, weekend whatever is left with you thank you so much again thank you very much thank you everybody thank you great show gurinder sir tennis dekh raha hai bye sir bye 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 bye, bye. Thank you doctors recording